Johnson Athletic Director Barry Alvarez was on Fry's staff for eight years at Iowa, serving as his linebackers coach. Of course, eventually became a Hall of Fame coach himself at Wisconsin. And Barry Alvarez, kind enough to join us on the phone here tonight. Coach, very sorry for your loss. What are the things that go through your mind when you think about Coach Fry? You know, I think, uh, I think of Hayden as a person that gave me an opportunity. And uh, I always told him, when I addressed him or when we were in functions together or whatever, I told people, he's the guy that gave me a break. You know, I was a high school coach in Iowa, and uh, when he came to to the University of Iowa, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to be hired on his first staff, a great staff, uh, great coaches on that staff, but he was a tremendous mentor and friend. Why do you think he had such an eye for coaching talent? I mean, for my money, Barry, that coaching tree is the greatest one in the history of college football. And, of course, you're a big part of the reason why. What was it about Hayden that enabled him to pick out people who were, for instance, high school coaches and see that they could be great? He took great pride in it. I know Dan McCarney today told me the last time he talked to Hayden, Hayden said, you know, there's, there was a survey in my tree. You know, in my tree, I have the more head coaches than, 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 than anyone. And uh, took great pride in that. It's interesting. You know, you took over a similar situation when you took over at Wisconsin to what Hayden took over at Iowa. I mean, Iowa had been down and out, came in and, and got it going in very short order. You were in a similar situation at Wisconsin. How much of what you did in Madison did you model after what Coach Fry did in Iowa City? I, I used his day-to-day -day approach and how he managed the program. Um, I think all of us, all of the, those on his staff who took head coaching jobs, I think all of us took something from his day-to-day -day approach. You know, he's, he was a whimsical character. Uh, everybody, you know, thought he was loosey-goosey. He was just the opposite in how he ran his program and how demanding he was as coaches and his players. And I think, I bet if you go back and talk to Bill Snyder, Kirk Ferentz, or any of us, that we took a lot of the things from his day-to-day -day approach in running our programs. What would be an example of something from his day-to-day -day that you brought to Madison? Just his, uh, you know, there was no st no st stone unturned. Everything that uh, everyone knew what was expected of him. You knew what time you were to be at work, what time we are going to meet, what time you could go home at night, um, what, we, what he expected of the players and how... Um, you know, how you were to, to, to dress, how you were to react, um, everything. There was nothing that wasn't detailed in, in his approach. You mentioned that he was a, a whimsical character, kind of a larger-than-life figure. Give us an insight into that part of his personality that, that you would see in coaches' meetings or in socializing that the rest of us didn't quite get to, to experience in the same way. <laughs> well... You know, the, you had the white pants, you had the sunglasses, uh, you had the big collars. Um, you know, he, and he had that, he'd say things in staff meetings. He'd use that Texas slang and, and some of the sayings that I didn't know what the hell he was talking about <laughs> at times. I'd go back and ask him, Coach, I don't know what that means. Hamstrung monkey, what does that mean? Uh, you know, a Jake leg, I don't know what a Jake leg is. You know, an egg hunter. He used all these different terms. I'd have to go back and, and, and get, you know, get, get a definition for what the heck he was even talking about. There clearly was a method to the madness, obviously. I mean, incredible success. What made him such a great coach? To what do you attribute that success? Well, you know what? He, he really had a very good um, understanding of football. He was, re he was really good at fundamentals. He was very creative. You know, when he came into the league, you know, he wanted to spread it out. And I, I can remember, you know, being a graduate assistant at Nebraska and Bob Devaney bringing him in to, to lecture and, and, and study what they were doing. I think he was at uh, SMU then. You know, he was spreading out and throwing the football before, before anyone else was. And, um, you know, when he, so he, when he came into the Big Ten, it was new. It was creative. Uh, the fans in Iowa weren't accustomed to that. And, but yet, he was very uh, good fundamentally. 
and, and, and hired coaches. Bill Brazier, his defensive coordinator, who was a great defensive coach. He let Bill coach, coach the defense, but still had certain parameters that had to be followed. It was such a tough situation in the Big Ten when you guys took over at Iowa. I mean, it was the Big Two and the Little Eight, and it really was. I mean, Michigan and Ohio State had dominated throughout the 1970s. What did he tell you that made you believe that you guys could do what you eventually did? Well, I can remember him coming back uh, our first year, coming back from Big Ten media days. So I just met with the coaches. I listened to all the coaches. He said, well, it's not going to take us long here. That's what he said. <laughs> he was that confident. It's not going to take us long to get this turned around. Well, he was right. Uh, a he was right. Three years we were in the Rose Bowl. I know. It's incredible, right? I mean, after 17 straight non-winning seasons. Uh, a remarkable life. Thank you for spending some time here tonight on short notice to discuss Hayden Fry with us. We really appreciate it, Coach, and we'll talk to you soon. Happy holidays. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Happy holidays.